Well, I just picked the most complicated brand to cover on this great Friday. <laughs> Hello boys and squirrels, happy Friday and welcome back to my channel. So today, as you guys saw by the title, we're going to be covering the history of Christian Dior. You guys seem to really love my History of Ralph Lauren video last week, so I decided to continue the series and cover Christian Dior. If you're new to this channel and you haven't already seen my History of Ralph Lauren video, basically what I'm doing in these videos is giving you a brief history summary of the designer themselves and then I'm going to walk you through the different style changes, the different label changes throughout the decades. We're only going to be focusing on the vintage styles from this brand. I'm not going to be covering any modern day labels because I want these videos to be a learning tool for you guys to look back on. If you find some of these pieces, you'll be able to look at the label, look at the style, and hopefully be able to look back on this video and kind of get an idea of what decade that the item is from. So that is the sole purpose of these videos. Also, little disclaimer before we get started, Christian Dior is a very complicated brand. It has had many creative directors since his death in 1957. And like, why did I pick a designer brand? They're so complicated. It's like trying to figure out politics or law. It has layers. It has so many layers and it's so hard to understand. I think I've gotten it compacted enough and simplified enough where this video isn't gonna be 35 minutes long because trust me, it could be. Also, despite my beret, I am not French. I am very much American and I will butcher some of these names. Just, you know, go easy on me. Don't crucify me in the comments because I am not French. We don't even say Christian Dior correctly. You know what I mean? Like that's a very American way of saying his name. So we're already off to a terrible start. <laughs> Alrighty, so I've rambled on enough. Let's get started. Alright, so let's start with a little brief history of Christian Dior himself. So Christian Dior was born in 1905 in Granville, France. He was the son of a wealthy manufacturer and one of five children. So his family moved to Paris when he was only five years old and upon leaving school he took over a small art gallery that sold work from artists like Pablo Picasso. But after the Great Depression in 19 1929, tragedy just kind of took over this family's life. His mother died, his brother was institutionalized, and his father's business went under, which forced Dior to close his gallery. He then went on to work for fashion designer Robert Piquet until he was called for military service in 1940. Christian Dior launched his brand in 1947 with a 90 piece spring and summer collection called Cuvolet. And it was later named The New Look after Harper Bazaar's editor-in-chief, Carmel Snow, had this to say. It's quite a revolution, dear Christian. Your dresses have such a new look. With its structured silhouettes, defined waists, full-bodied skirts, and an average of 20 yards of fabric used per piece, the collection was a response to the end of rationing and the war, and Dior was an overnight success. So quick little side note, I know we're only talking about fashion, but this little fun fact is relevant to the fashion, if that makes sense, because it does come up later on in Christian Dior designs. So that same year in 1947, his younger sister Catherine joined the French Resistance or the French Resistance, which resulted in her capture and imprisonment in the Ravensbrück concentration camp. So in 1947, he named his first fragrance Miss Dior as a tribute to her. Dior went on to receive the Neiman Marcus Award also in 1947. And after his trip to the United States, he quickly realized that if he wanted to reach the large number of elegant American women, he would have to open a luxury ready-to-wear shop in New York. Thus, Christian Dior New York Incorporated was born. Here are a couple examples of the Christian Dior New York Incorporated labels. These are from the late 40s and early 50s. By the 1950s, Dior had dressed members of the royal family and designed every look for actress Marlene Dietrich in the Alfred Hitchcock film Stage Fright. In 1955, 19-year-old Yves Saint Laurent became Dior's design assistant. 
A little fun fact, in 1957, Christian actually met with St. Laurent's mother to tell her that he had chosen her son to take his place at Dior, which she found very odd because he was only 57 at the time. However, shortly after that, Christian Dior died of a heart attack, and the brand was taken over by the now 21-year-old Yves St. Laurent. He kept Dior's legacy alive by using the same fabrics and keeping the proportions and silhouettes relatively similar. However, St. Laurent's collections featured pieces that were softer, lighter, and easier to wear. St. Laurent's designs became more daring due to his success, but in 1960, his Bohemian collection was harshly criticized. And coincidentally, he was called up to join the French army, forcing him to leave the brand. So after that, Mark Bohan was appointed to become the brand's creative director in the late 1960s. Bohan instilled a more conservative style, and he was credited as the man who kept the Dior label at the forefront of fashion while still producing wearable and elegant clothes. And Women's Wear Daily claimed that Bohan actually saved the brand. Here's an example of a couple of Bohan's designs. As you can see, they're very conservative. In 1967, Bohan's assistant, Felipe, Felipe, we're just gonna call him Felipe G because I am not trying to pronounce this last name and I can't find it on the internet anywhere. So Felipe G is what we're gonna call him. He launched the brand's first less expensive ready to wear collection and he called it Miss Dior. So that's where the name Miss Dior comes into play for the fashion side of things. And this line was created to appeal to a younger customer. Here's an example of a Miss Dior label from the 1960s and then another Miss Dior label in the 1970s. As you can see, the fonts vary extremely. One is real pretty and the other is kind of almost like 80s looking, but they are both Miss Dior. Miss Dior was actually exclusively sold in France and wasn't exported to the United States until December 1970. So the ready to wear labels are the New York, London, and boutique labels. Until the early 60s, these labels were designed by Christian Dior himself and then Saint Laurent and Bohan after his death. Here's some examples of the ones in the early 60s. As you can see, it says made in France. After 1961, these lines were designed in New York and London by designers hired specifically to create these lines. So if you see a Christian Dior tag that is one of these three lines, that being the New York, the London, or the boutique line, and it's made in England or made in New York, it was most likely made after 1961. As you can see, this one says Christian Dior London, which is the Christian Dior London line, and then under it, it says made in England. Another example is if it were to say Christian Dior Boutique um, and instead of Paris it would say made in New York or England. So don't get it confused with um, when you see Christian Dior London actually look at where it was manufactured. All right, so moving on. In 1989, Italian-born Gianfranco Ferre replaced Bowen as head designer. As the first non-French designer to take over the creative side of Dior, Ferre actually left behind the traditional aesthetic of Dior. With a reputation for feminine and romantic silhouettes, Ferre's new style concept was described as refined, sober, and strict. By 1990, Dior boutiques had been opened in upscale New York, Los Angeles, and Tokyo shopping districts, and Ferre remained with the brand until 1997, when he was replaced by British designer John Galliano. But here's a little sip of tea for you on this Friday. Galliano was actually let go in 2011 after he was filmed slurring anti-Semitic remarks and allegedly assaulting a member of the public whilst heavily intoxicated in a Paris bar. That's the thesis. That's it. And on that note, I think that about covers it for vintage Christian Dior. I'm going to put on the screen right now some examples of labels. I got all of this from the label resource on vintagefashionguild.org. You guys know I love that website. This is no, in no way sponsored whatsoever. I just love that website so much. I get a ton of information from there. I'm also going to leave link down below all of the source websites that I got all of this information from. So if you guys want to deep dive into it a little more, get some more information, read up on it, there's plenty of resources that are going to be linked down below. Also, if you have a brand that you would like me to cover in the future, please feel free to leave any suggestions that you have down below. I hope you learned a little something and enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure and give it a thumbs up on your way out. 
thoughts. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join our family. We would love to have you. I put new videos out every Wednesday and Friday, and I will see you guys on Wednesday. Bye, guys.